And tonight, a backyard patio is at the center of a legal battle, and it could impact homeowners across Indianapolis. So if you have a deck or a patio in your yard, or if you're thinking of adding one this summer, this is a story you'll want to stop and watch tonight. Senior investigative reporter Bob Siegel shows you how a zoning rule you've probably never heard of could cost you thousands. Kim and Ray Pack have quite a view of Geis Reservoir. It's just so relaxing to be out here. But relaxing is not how the Pecks describe their six-year legal fight with the city of Indianapolis, a fight that focuses on this backyard patio. It's hard to even enjoy it because you're thinking at any moment someone's going to say, you got to rip this out. It's been easily the worst experience of our lives. The Pecks renovated the patio in 2017, expanding it to host family get-togethers and their daughter's Girl Scout gatherings. During construction, a neighbor complained the patio was being built without any permits and encroaching on his property. Next thing we know, we had an inspector show up. Do we need any permits? Is there any violations? He says, no, everything looks great. You know, keep going. So the builders kept going. But the PEC say six weeks after they finished the renovation, a city building inspector returned with these three stop work orders claiming the PECs failed to get the permits they needed. The result, six years of litigation. And just a few months ago, a magistrate in Marion County Superior Court ruled against the PECs. The court said the city has every right to enforce a little known rule in the city's zoning code. It deals with what's called a minor residential structure, defined as structures such as porches, decks, or patios 18 inches or greater in height. In his ruling, the magistrate wrote, patios greater than 18 inches are unambiguously designated as minor residential structures subject to city permit requirements. And the 18 inches includes all parts of the structure. It means the Peck's backyard patio did require a special permit because the retaining walls and this built-in countertop are more than a foot and a half off the ground. We have spent over $240,000 defending this. And again, all we did was rebuild our patio on our home property. And here we are, six years later, this has been a disaster for our family. I know what you're probably thinking. I don't live on Geis Reservoir, so this really doesn't impact me. Well, the reality is this case extends well beyond this patio. It extends well beyond this reservoir. In fact, it could impact thousands of families all over Marion County. If the city decides to take a more aggressive stance on structures like this, it should cause a lot of people concern because they might have existing structures that they didn't get per permits for that they should have. Peter Kovacs is an attorney who specializes in laws affecting homeowners. He says the zoning ordinance the city is enforcing in the Peck's backyard could also mean big trouble for other families. Just look around. It seems nearly every neighborhood now has remodeled decks and patios with fire pits, trellises, sitting walls, and other features that are more than 18 inches high. It's a cautionary tale of what could happen if you don't make that step to get the permit. Do you think that most folks who have backyard patios and decks are aware that this is in play? Certainly not. And, and that's why this case is, is, should be of concern to them. Ray worries that lots of other homes in Indianapolis, including the Geist area, might also be subject to inspection and fines by the city. This will impact everybody. Is the city now actively looking for permit violations on decks and patios that are higher than 18 inches? There is not a proactive um, enforcement team that is uh, intentionally looking for things of that nature, no. That's Amy Wonder, Deputy Director of the city's Department of Business and Neighborhood Services. Her answer got me thinking. If the city is not proactively enforcing its minor residential structure rule, why are inspectors enforcing it against the Peck family? We don't know for sure because city officials told me they cannot talk specifics about the case. Why? There is still ongoing litigation with the particular case that you're referencing, and um, at this time I would not be able to comment on that. Some questions the city will not answer, and other questions it seems are hard to answer. Really hard. When do folks need a permit, and when do they not need a permit? Unfortunately, there's not a, a clear this or that answer. It just depends a little bit on the type of improvement that is proposed. If someone has a a fence or a wall or a trellis that's built onto their deck, would that need a permit if it's above 18 inches? It would really depend on the scope of their project that is identified on their plans. What about a fire pit that's built in as part of a deck? 
Um, I think that's hard to answer. I think that depends on, on the nature of that improvement. And again, we'd have to see the plans to be able to make that determination. Of course, any time the city reviews your plans, there's a fee for that. There's also a fee for a permit. But the city says it's better to be safe than sorry. When in doubt, apply for a permit and we're happy to help you navigate that process. The PECs have learned that lesson the hard way, and there's still no resolution in sight. This has just been horrible. We've been through six years of hell and expense, and it's, it has controlled our lives. This backyard battle is still working its way through the zoning appeal process. Bottom line, if you're building or renovating a deck or patio in the city of Indianapolis and any part of it is above 18 inches, chances are you need a permit. We have lots more information, including links to city codes and resources at WTHR.com. I'm Bob Siegel, 13 Investigates.